I keep on harping on NVIDIA every single day because every single day it, it goes up like two, three dollars. We're getting cash flow and then it kind of just stalls out. So yeah, every single day we're, we're, you know, there's not a lot of these names that are really breaking out with very aggressive volume. So we have to wait for them. So, you know, I like this macro channel. Any close over this macro channel could see a move. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader.com um, nightly update show. Uh, happy Wednesday, happy hump day. Uh, again, there's not a lot of pros in the COVID world, but one of the pros for sure is having Wednesday afternoon football. Who doesn't love better than that? I was doing my chart work, watching the Pittsburgh uh, Ravens game, right? There's always a glass half full somewhere. Hope everybody uh, is having a good holiday season again. Hope everybody had a good trading day again. And, and the market played out pretty much uh, like we talked about in last night's video. We talked about uh, the market having a pregnant pause uh, on the upper Bollinger Band. I said there's a you know, pretty decent probability they're going to you know, start selling the market, at least the indexes at the open. And the most important part of what we talked about yesterday on the initial sell-off was there, nobody is going to even, even realize or even acknowledge that it's, it's happening. That's the mark of a really good, strong market. And that's kind of the way the plays kind of played out today. Uh, a lot of the shorts that I had on my list for this morning, they really got, you know, hit right away. It was very, very tough to even trade them. The only one that triggered and pivoted the, the right way was Square. We'll get into, into the individual pivots for a second, but you really have to like the macro structure of this market. Again, no news is good news. My mom used to say that all the time. The market is doing completely the most bullish scenarios they could possibly have. Any dips into light volume rising support is getting bought up. So, for example, this morning, um, you know, yet queues come in. They got sold off at the open. And just like in good, strong uh, bull market fashion, the rise in support, right? They went through the rise in support, reclaimed it, went back up. And again, if you look at the daily chart of the queues, we talked about last night about the rising five-day support. The rising five-day support held here, rising five-day support held here as well. And the most important part of what I'm seeing right now is not only is beta waking up. And again, yesterday you had Netflix breaking out, had a good structured res day. You had Facebook, had a really, really big move yesterday. At one point it really got aggressive as well. But again, you can make a case that it got a very good structured res day. And again, you saw $300 weekly calls coming out, 320s for January, very, very strong. Apple broke out several days ago again. Very constructive rest days, and now it just needs to confirm this upper Bollinger Band to rise. But more important than just the NASDAQ names, look at the Dow stocks. Boeing had a really good four or five day consolidation, broke out today. Again, we'll get to individual pivots in a second. Disney, again, another name. Big, strong consolidation about a week or so, broke out today. Look at Honeywell. Okay, this is a name. It's now a month and change. If Honeywell starts breaching on top of this, this area, it's going to go as well. So you have a continuation of a perfect storm. Sometimes you don't need to overthink the market structure. You don't need to overthink the market action. When it's good and it looks good and smells good and feels good and you, know, you could do, you'd knock out your watch list in five minutes, that's a good thing, right? That's market structure, that's valuable, um, valuable tools that you're using every single day to identify quick setups that you don't need to research two, three hours for. Like I did my watch list literally tonight in five to six minutes. That's how obvious certain setups were. And the most important part kind of going into tomorrow or just kind of going into the year end is look at the market for phase value. Just don't overthink. If the market's strong, continues to be strong, continues to be bought on any single dips, just go with it, right? Go with it. Again, we, we don't care what's going to happen in 2021. Anything could happen. The market can continue its bullish run. The market could get pulled and everybody gets killed because everybody's, you know, was clamping down on the FOMO aspect of the market. We don't know. We, again, we want to take it day by day, trade by trade. Don't overanalyze. Don't overthink. Phase value, if the market's saying it's strong, 
just go with it okay there's no such thing as you're going to outsmart the market the market's not there for you to outsmart so be very nimble have an open mind on both sides of the market and make sure again you are trading um with the momentum and not against it so again pretty basic stuff uh, again you don't need to reinvent the wheel for tomorrow market is strong uh, i like honeywell you know again a name that I, I really really like i like honeywell uh nvidia i finally caught today uh, we'll talk about that in a second again it's not out of the woods for macro but it's getting there so for the last couple of days i've caught it pretty decent scalps and now we're very very close for a macro break there as well so things are looking pretty good all across the board the key is to again stay patient trade what you feel comfortable trade whatever groups you feel comfortable and most important don't anticipate let everything to confirm so i mean again there's no reason to to go through you know a, a million different adjectives to say what's going on i mean the market's just very very strong so let's talk about today um you know i was watching amazon pre-market it was very very strong um i like that 3250 level it just never got there but again it is very very strong and once it starts rebuilding that 3250 level i do believe uh, next leg will start running. Uh, ZM, I actually liked, we talked about it last night. I liked it for a second day uh, pull off of a, you know, off of a green opening. You got to pull. The problem was it opened up green up a couple of bucks or so, and then it went red pre-market and went down like nine ten dollars right away unfortunately because of ssr i just couldn't get a you know i couldn't get a trade-off on this thing just because the big spread pre-market and ssr so kind of screwed things up for me uh square was the only valid short of the day uh two times it held 200 that was the daily chart if it builds below can flush here was square all right so here was square here's the 200 it held twice off the 10 day it broke the 200 and went all the way down to 195 a nice move there on square uh, Netflix, keep an eye on watch red to green for experienced traders. Note this is not a pivot. It still needs to confirm 510. It went red to green, you know, went up like two and a half, three dollars. Not a big move there. Uh, here is definitely the move. Synth never got close. Uh, here's definitely the move, at least for me. Uh, 542 needs to build. Watching for the options market. And we got that options market. We started seeing 550 weeklies on the video. And then a guy came in for the January 645 calls. All right, Playboy, do your thing. I got it. So here is the 542, right? So here is the 542. It confirmed that it traded up to about 547. So it was a you know pretty decent move. I want to see it take out this channel here. Here's the macro channel that I really want to pay attention to. And again, I keep on harping on the video every single day because every single day it, it goes up like two, three dollars. We're getting cash flow and then it kind of just stalls out. So yeah, every single day we're, you know, there's not a lot of these names that are really breaking out with very aggressive volume. So we have to wait for them. So, you know, I like this macro channel, any close over this macro channel could see a move uh, all the way back to uh, 52 week high. So again, it's been a good trader, but I want, I want that stretch. I definitely want that stretch. Uh, BYND, uh, 134.50, 134 needs to build. Stock traded to 134.60, so never got there. Uh, here comes squares, 195 on square. Uh, Boeing was, um, uh, you know, Boeing finally broke out. Congratulations for all you guys who are holding Boeing, uh, who are holding overnight. Big, strong, aggressive call buyers came in. Here was the sneaky pivot here. This 218, uh, 218.50 needs to build. And not only did it build the 218.50, and again, this is a devil of a trader. Let's all be honest here. Of all the stocks, they, we're going to trade in our lives, lifetimes. This is the stock that's going to make you lose life until this thing finally goes. And that's, that's its mantra. That's its MO. But again, technical analysis is technical analysis. It took out the 218, 218.50, and it confirmed the 223. And this is the highest close in this whole formation. If this thing confirms tomorrow at 25 bucks, look how much room uh, you have back to the upside. So good move there. In the video we just talked about, uh, Spotify went absolutely nuts. Uh, 296 needs to build. A buyer came in for the 305 calls, the weeklies, and Spotify went absolutely nuts. So it took out this whole 296 level and trade into the 330s. Just an absolute huge move there uh, as well. Uh, you know, beautiful move on NVIDIA. Uh, Spotify going absolutely nuts. Uh, here we talked about Boeing, 223's macro breakout, traded to, to uh, 3, uh, 235 as well. Here's the don't judge me of the day, right? I started buying a small cap stock today. Don't ask me why. I was intrigued. 
So I bought it. I bought some at 44 cents. That's pretty much where it closed. If this stupid little thing, man, can get above 45, 46 cents tomorrow, who knows? Who the hell knows? Yes, I'm the only human being on the planet that could possibly trade Amazon and a 44 cent stock all at the same time, all at the same breath. But again, it is what it is, what it is. So tomorrow, obviously, uh, I am definitely bullish on the market until it gives us a reason not to be. Uh, diamonds, uh, again, very, very important level here coming up for any continuation move off that 301 level on the diamonds. Uh, the IWM that we discussed yesterday, again, is still sitting in its holding pattern. The only thing that, again, I always play devil's advocate. The only thing I don't like, it's put in three days in a row of lower highs. But again, that could change very, very quickly. The ranges on this thing is still 180 to the downside and 184 and a half, 185 to the upside. And the Qs uh, did a great job again today holding the rising five-day moving average. And if they can just confirm this whole area here, uh, you know, roughly, you know, roughly around that 305 area, you're going to have a big leg up into the end of the year. So guys, have a great night, everybody. Try to keep this uh, short and sweet. Again, sometimes you just don't need to be creative. God's help. I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care.